Losing is as much as part of basketball as winning, but some teams do a lot more losing than winning. They lose so much that they become synonymous with losing. One such team is the Los Angeles Clippers. They became the butt of many jokes, especially during the 90s when winning came few and far in between. For the uninitiated, the Clippers are the other team in LA in the NBA. Although the reputation and standing has improved in recent years, the Clippers have not been able to shake off that little brother tag. No thanks to the fact that they play their home games at the Staples Center under the championship banners of the team they share a building with, the exponentially more famous and way more successful LA Lakers. And it's just the fact that there's a long, strange, and odd history of the Clippers, which we'll gloriously take a look at in this video. So strap up and get ready to learn more about the very strange history of the Los Angeles Clippers. Founded in 1970 as the Buffalo Braves, the franchise was one of three expansion teams to join the NBA that year. Rebranded as the San Diego Clippers after the sailing ships were often seen in the San Diego Bay, the team saw little success and missed the playoffs in all six years in San Diego. In 1984, the franchise made the first of what would be a long string of controversial moves as owner Donald Sterling relocated the team to Los Angeles without explicit approval from the league. The NBA was so enraged with the audacious move that it fined Sterling a mind-boggling $250 million. He countersued for $100 million, but eventually dropped the suit when the league decreased the fine to just $6 million. After all the hoopla, the team was allowed to remain in Los Angeles where it floundered for nearly three decades. Over the course of 27 seasons, the Clippers qualified for the postseason only four times and won a single playoff round. The Clippers were frequently seen as a clear example of a perennial loser in American professional sports, drawing unfavorable comparisons to the historically successful Lakers, with whom they shared a market with since 1984 and an arena since 1999. The Clippers' reputation improved during the 2010s, which saw them transform into a consistent postseason contender for the first time. Aided by the Lob City lineups of high flyers Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan, along with celebral guard Chris Paul, the team made it to the NBA playoffs in five straight years, from 2011 to 2017, and won two consecutive division titles in 2013 and 2014, both first for the franchise. However, that steady rise was quickly given a quick jolt of reality by none other than the team's owner. On April 25, 2014, TMZ released a taped conversation in which team owner Donald Sterling, who had a history of accusations of racist behavior against African Americans and Latinos dating back to the 1990s, reprimanded V. Stavino for posting an Instagram photo featuring her, former Los Angeles point guard Magic Johnson, and another woman. Sterling stated that it bothered him that she had, quote, broadcast that she is associating with black people and that he did not want Stavino to bring them to the team's games. And of course, the remarks in the tape caused public backlash and when the dust settled, the NBA issued Sterling a lifetime ban from the organization. The NBA eventually forced Sterling to sell the team to former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer, putting a stunning end to the less than Sterling 33-year reign of Sterling. The Clippers' misfortunes and mishaps go way back, as far back as 1976. It was during this time when the Clippers franchise acquired a promising young 21-year-old named Moses Malone from the Portland Trailblazers in exchange for a 1978 first rounder and some spare change. But then, would you believe Malone only played 6 minutes as a member of the Braves before they traded him to Houston just 6 days later? Man, what a dumb move. The rest, as they say? Is history. Malone went on to have an outstanding career that included 12 All-Star selections, 3 MVP awards, and a Finals MVP as well. The Clippers got a hold of one of the five greatest centers in the history of the game and gave him up before even giving him a chance to shine. It's clearly one of the biggest blunders in franchise history. Before their recent resurgence, the Clippers had a track record of bungling players' transactions. This was again put on full display during the 1998 draft. 
In 1998, the Clippers had the good fortune of owning the number one overall pick in the star-studded 1998 draft. With top talents littering the top of the draft board, there was absolutely no way the Clips would come out the draft with a solid player that they could build a franchise on, right? But that's why they're the Clippers. In true Clippers fashion, the Clips passed on sure things of Mike Bibby, Vince Carter, Antoine Jameson, and Paul Pierce, and took a flyer on a relatively unknown player that they thought possessed a great potential. No, we don't mean Dirk Nowitzki or Rashad Lewis. We're speaking of Michael Alawa Candy. And I know you're like, what? The Candyman was a 23 year old center who had a good college season at the University of the Pacific. Yet the Clippers saw something in him that not even Alawa Candy's own mother could have seen. He went on to have a dismissal nine year career in the NBA, shooting a paltry 43.5% from the field. To date, that's the worst mark of any big man taken first overall in the last two decades. Well, there's also Anthony Bennett, but that's a different story. Even the undrafted Brad Miller had a career that was infinitely more productive than Michael. Instead of a franchise player, the Clippers botched the pick and got another franchise black eye. Now, if you thought the picking of Alawa Candy was the Clippers' most head-scratching player move of all time, prepare to pull all your hair out as we discuss several moves the franchise pulled off in the 80s. The strangest of all Clippers' decision-making centered around the 1984 NBA Draft. Two years after trading away young Moses Malone, the Clippers traded a 1984 first-round pick to Philadelphia for World B Free. That 1984 pick would turn out to be the number five pick overall. Now, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to trade a pick six years down the road for a proven NBA star. In fact, Free was second in the NBA in scoring in both his seasons with the Clippers, earning an all-star selection in 1980. The problem was, Clippers traded Free after just two seasons just when he was entering the prime of his career at 26 years old and fresh off a season where he scored more than 30 points per game and made the all-star team. To make things worse, the trade nettled the Clippers a washed up guy named Phil Smith. Uh, who's that? And a 1984 first rounder that ended up being 8th overall. So for all y'all keeping track, the Clippers traded the number 5 pick in the 1984 draft for a nobody and the number 8 pick in the 1984 draft too. Why is this important? Because the Clippers selected Lancaster Gordon 8th overall in 1984, the same year that Charles Barkley was chosen as the 5th overall pick. Like, wow. As if that wasn't terrible enough, the Clippers also gave up the 1981 first round pick, Tom Chambers, who went on to be selected to four all-star teams and two all-NBA second teams after just two seasons, shipping him off to Seattle for James Donaldson in the number 14 pick in the 1984 draft. The Clippers eventually used that pick on Michael Cage, which is well and good until you realize that John Stockton was selected two picks later. Yes, that John Stockton, the NBA's all-time leader in assists and steals, and a member of the league's 50 greatest players of all time. So basically, the Clippers came out of what many considered the greatest draft of all time with Lancaster Gordon and Michael Cage. In a six-year stretch, they traded Moses Malone, Tom Chambers, World Be Free, and a pick that ended up being Charles Barkley. The 1985 Clippers could have featured Malone, Barkley, Chambers, and Stockton to go along with Bill Walton, who was already on the roster. Instead, it featured, well, basically just Walton, whose poor health limited him to just 37 starts that season. Fast forward, and the Clippers still have a strange history. The Clippers hold the anonymous record of being one of only three NBA franchises that have never made a conference finals. However, they have came close on three separate occasions. The Clippers have won three games in the conference semifinals three different times and failed to advance all three times. Twice, they have had a three games to one lead and failed to advance. Only 13 times in NBA history has a team held a three to one advantage and lost, and the Clippers make up a quarter of those. In the 2006 playoffs, the Clippers and Suns were tied at three games, but the Clippers failed to win game seven, losing in a blowout by 20 points. Then in 2015, the Clippers led the Houston Rockets three to one and ended up losing the next three games in one blowout after another. Like, dang, Lob City couldn't make it? Then once again, in September 2020, the Clippers led the Nuggets three to one and had leads of more than 15 points in games five, six, and seven. They lost all of those games. The Clippers are 0-8 in potential closeout games to advance to the conference finals, going all the way back to their Buffalo days. When will the Clippers shatter the curse hovering over them? 
Or will the Clippers continue to be the Clippers, even with a souped-out roster that features the likes of all-world talent Paul George and two-time Finals MVP Kawhi Leonard? I guess only time will tell. This wasn't to throw shade at the Clippers organization or any of y'all fans, but for now, we'll just sit back and enjoy the strange ride of the LA Clippers history. Appreciate the view, subscribe if you're new, and as always, thank you for watching.